Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the all new Latte Panda IOTA. Some are calling it the Latte Panda IOTA, but it's an IOT device and it's a direct drop in replacement for the original Latte Panda, which launched years ago. And I'll tell you, this is a major upgrade when you compare it to the chipset used in that one. In fact, this is eight times more powerful. And since the launch of the original, Latte Panda has released several other single board computers, but nothing in this exact form factor. Again, it's a direct drop-in replacement for the original Latte Panda. And with this, we also have some major upgrades to the IO, like much faster USB speeds. We also have USB-C and a PCIe 3.0 X1 FPC connector. So with that, we can actually connect an M.2 drive to this, and we don't have to worry about the internal eMMC, which the new Latte Panda IoT actually has up to 128 gigabytes, and you can get this with up to 16 gigabytes of RAM. That's the model that we have here. They're also offering a bunch of different hats and IO accessories. What I've got here is the M.2 adapter. That way we can add up to a 2280 M.2 SSD. They also have a 4G module so you can connect over a cellular network. But one of my favorite hats here is their smart UPS hat. It's basically a battery backup for the Latte Panda IO. And it's not just a backup. You can power the device from this. It takes three 18650 cells and it's got a wide input range. So you can charge it using anywhere from a 12 volt up to a 24 volt adapter. Since the new Latte Panda is putting down a lot more power than the original, heat was a concern, so they do offer a couple different coolers. I've got the active cooler here, which I think looks really good. Super slim. Once it's installed, yeah, I mean, the whole board itself does look pretty nice. I've also installed the M.2 adapter, along with a 512 gigabyte drive. And with that, it comes with the extra long standoff, so if I wanted to install the smart UPS, I could also do that with the M.2. When it comes to the overall layout and I.O., I've got a little chart here because there's a ton of stuff on this board. It's got the M.2e key so we can add Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, or even that uh, 4G module I was talking about. One full-size USB 3.2 port. It's a 10 gig port. Full-size HDMI 2.1. I2C touch connector. EDP display connector. It's got that PCIe 3.0 X1 FPC connector, and that's going to be for our M.2 bunch of dip switches we've got extra power input rtc battery connector and by the way this does come with a little rtc battery that you can uh, plug directly into the board 3.5 millimeter audio jack micro sd card reader and again we do have internal storage so it's emmc storage with this and you can do up to 128 gigabytes around back a couple more things like the power management connector for that smart upc you plug it directly into here and our fan connector it's fully controllable from the bios but they also offer a passive cooling solution if that's the way you want to go when it comes to the overall specs the new latte panda iota is powered by the intel twin lake n150 so we've got four cores four threads and this will clock up the 3.6 gigahertz on a single core or 2.9 on all four cores a 24 compute unit Intel UHD iGPU that clocks up to 1000 megahertz. You can get this with either eight or 16 gigabytes of onboard RAM at 4,800 megatransfers per second. And this RAM does have in-band ECC, so error correction on that RAM. They also offer either 64 or 128 gigabytes of onboard eMMC storage. It's 5.1. And since this is an x86 chip, you can run Windows or Linux on this. This just happened to come pre-installed with Windows 11. I want to get into the BIOS real quick, and then we'll get right into some testing. Getting right in here to the BIOS, there's a few things that I wanted to check out and possibly change. Uh, I will be running from an M.2 drive. We installed the adapter there, but this does have the built-in eMMC. This is going to be much slower than an M.2, so if you're really going to utilize it, I would use Linux on it. You could get away with Windows, but it is kind of noticeable. Uh, from Advanced, CPU configuration, power limit one, it's set to 10, and we can do up to 15 watts, but with this setup, I actually want just a bit more, and I'm not sure if we're going to be able to get there or not, so we're going to go to 20 watts, so this is in milliwatts, so 2,000 milliwatts would be 20 watts, and we'll go up here, just to ensure that we can hit 15 watts with this system, plus if we're talking about maxing out the CPU and GPU at the same time, it can probably pull a bit more. Hardware monitoring, 
since we've got the uh, fan installed, we do have full control over it. You can go full mode if you want. I'm just going to leave it at automatic, trusted computing, NVMe configuration, power configuration, wake from LAN, AC power loss. You can power it off or lost state, power back on, always on, double deck USB port. Yeah, lots of power options here. And those come in really handy for these IoT devices. Chipset, device configuration. I've got everything enabled here. So basically, I just wanted to make sure that we had that power limit set because uh, I know it's going to help out with performance. I'm going to save changes, reset. So first things first, I wanted to make sure that we could hit that 15 watt TDP with the setup. And you saw we went into the BIOS and took it up to 20 watts. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to do 20 with it, but uh, we should be able to get a little more than 15 out of it. So I've got a uh, CPU-Z here. We're going to go to bench, stress. And right down here, I've got hardware info running. This is our TDP just on the CPU side. So this is what the CPU is pulling right now, uh, maxing out all four of those cores. We're right there at 15 watts. And if I come over here, yeah, right there, looks like 14.74. But there's more that we actually need to get out of this because right now it's just CPU. If we're utilizing that and the iGPU, then uh, the whole system can pull a lot more. So we'll start a render test on the built-in iGPU. Oh yeah, it just jumped up to 21 watts. So we're pulling more than 15 here. And the temps, not too bad. This little thing is spinning up with that heat sink on it. But it looks like we did have a maximum of 21.751 watts out of this system here with the iGPU and the CPU maxed out. So yeah, it's going to run much better than it would at a 6-watt or an 8-watt TDP. I've tested a few of these N150s, and I mean, they can be a pain to use in Windows at that kind of wattage because it's just not enough to get the clocks up on the GPU and CPU at the same time. But this thing's actually pretty snappy for what it is for uh, web browsing, email checking, document editing. We'll head over to the Latte Panda website. And if you were ever thinking about upgrading from, let's say, the Latte Panda up to this, it definitely would be worth it. I mean, in terms of performance, this blows it out of the water. We'll head over here. We've got that palm-sized x86 single board computer. It is the same form factor as the original Latte Panda, and it's eight times faster. And it really is. I mean, it is eight times faster over on the CPU and especially on the GPU. Uh, moving down, you can see we've got the uh, benchmark, and I believe, I guess this is just Geekbench 6. Yeah, it's got to be Geekbench 6. Multi-core, 2,820. Single-core, 1,193. Pi-5 falls behind that. Celeron, 5105 falls way behind that. And the original Latte Panna, which had that Intel Atom X5 Z8350, is just a slouch. And even when it was released, it wasn't a super fast chip. Let's check out some 4K YouTube video playback. So we'll head over here, and I'll find something I think I can do, like a Sony demo do the Sony food demo. And from here, we'll go ahead and pause it, make sure we're at 4K, stats for nerds on. So we've got the drop frames up in the top left-hand corner, and this little N150 at 15 watts will handle 4K 60 HDR playback quite well. As you can see, zero drop frames, and I've always had really good luck with these Intel chips and 4K video playback, especially on these new N-series chips. Again, I would love to see one of these with the N200. The chip itself isn't that much more powerful than the N150, but we've got higher clocks on the CPU and a little bit of a better GPU over there. So this is streaming, but it's even better with native 4K video playback. And with these Intel chips, you can choose from a ton of different codecs to use. So far, not too bad. It's an everyday low-end desktop PC. It's not going to run Cyberpunk 2077 at uh, 60fps 4K, and in fact, it might not even run it at 20, but when it comes to lower-end games, the N150 can run a ton of them. When it comes to indie games, something like Silk Song at 720, you're able to run this at 60fps. Might have a couple dips here and there when uh, shaders are kind of caching, but overall, it's a pretty decent experience. Also went through and I tested Hades 2. It's just one of those games that's going to run really well. 
Half-Life 2 Far Cry, you know, those older games are going to run pretty good here. One game that I've actually had a couple issues with on the N150 is uh, OG Skyrim. So it only runs at about 50 FPS, even at low 720. But going over to something like Left 4 Dead 2, you can get much more than 60 out of it at 720p. And of course, this thing is not marketed as a gaming PC, it was never meant to be, but it's totally capable of running these older games and indie games. So when it comes to emulation, the N150 is going to handle Dreamcast, PSP, even GameCube. Now there are a few games that do struggle at the native resolution for GameCube using the Dolphin emulator, but there's also some PS2 games that are fully playable on this little chip. And one thing to really keep in mind is the version of this Latte Panda that we have has 16 gigabytes of RAM. They also sell an 8 gig version. And I highly suggest if you buy the 8 gig version, run Linux on it. It's just not going to use as much memory. And just on the desktop without anything else running in the background, just, you know, the regular tasks going, this is using around 6.1 gigabytes of memory. So with 8 gigs, you don't have much left at all. The final thing I wanted to talk about here was total power consumption from the wall. And I'm just using a little 65 watt PD charger. You don't need that much for this system. I set the TDP up to 20 watts. This is going to be much less if you just leave it at that 10 watt TDP. We're also running Windows 11. And at idle, it's only pulling 3 watts. 4K video playback jumps up to 7. And the maximum that I saw this thing pull, and it was just kind of a peak, was 26 watts. So yeah, it's definitely a low power consumption unit and you could run this off a battery for sure. I will be making at least one more video with this board. I want to install Linux on it and my first thought was Manjaro, but if anybody has any suggestions, let me know in the comments below. And if you're interested in learning a little more about this single board computer, I'll leave links in the description. But that's going to wrap it up for our first look. And like always, thanks for watching.